today we're going to be looking at this pack, the Talon 44. I'm going to be going over the main features of this, but I'm also going to show you a couple of standout features that I think make this pack really good. I'm also going to show you a couple of features that you might consider to be deal breakers. Now the Osprey Talon 44 comes in at 1.1 kilograms, which is about 2.4 pounds in weight, which makes it a fairly lightweight pack. I contacted Osprey and asked them, when you measure the size of the pack being 44 liters, do you include the stretchy pockets on the outside? And they said, no, they don't. They don't include that on any of their packs. So what you get is a little bit more. The feel of this pack is very much that it's like a limpet that's clamped tightly onto your back. As long as you keep within weight usages for this pack, which is around 11 kilograms or 24 pounds, you'll find that the pack's very stable. It hugs you tightly and it moves with you. It's not gonna rock around much or go beyond that. Once you go over that kind of pack weight though, it will start to become unstable. And what that feels like is if you can imagine a car with a roof rack on top, which is a little bit overloaded and how wobbly and unstable that is, that's kind of what this pack will start to feel like if you go too heavy with it. Now on the outside, you'll find these stretchy pockets. You can fit with a bit of a push, one liter Nalgene bottle into the side. But when we look at these entry points here, they just aren't really stretchy enough to get one of these in, you'd be all right with one of those smart water bottles or a narrower bottle than this. I wish that perhaps they'd made the side pockets a little bit more stretchy so you can fit more variety of bottles in from the back. Now this stretchy pocket on the outside has a little clip at the top here so you can pull things in. It has a drainage hole at the bottom as well and in case you want to put your waterproofs into here. And I think you could get a small waterproof jacket and small waterproof trousers into them. You wouldn't get more heavy duty ones so I just don't think it's big enough. Again, using this bottle to illustrate the size of it, I think you could probably comfortably fit two of them in there. But you want to do more than that. Although it's made of a nice strong material, it does feel relatively heavy duty and it will stand up some abuse. The material the pack's made of on the outside feels very strong. It feels like it'll be slightly water repellent and it's been my experience that it is a bit. It's also reinforced at the bottom with heavier duty materials. You notice at the bottom here as well, you've got attachment points for a tent and this has good quality straps with a reasonable amount of thickness to hold a light to medium weight tent. You get ice axe attachment points on both sides of the pack. You can use these to store walking poles as well. What I use this one for is put carabiner on here. So if I put a tent on the back, I can hook the string from the bag onto it. So if it falls off, I don't lose the tent. I found these straps to be particularly well made and very nice and stable as well. Now here we come to one of the standout features and that is the shoulder straps. Whilst they are relatively thin, they are nice and wide and they spread the load very, very nicely and well across the shoulders. You never get that feeling of anything digging in or causing any discomfort. There's also loop points here for a water bottle bladder tube to go through. And I think that these, this is meant as like a nesting point for the mouthpiece. The entire back system can move up and down. It's Velcro attached here. And there's a pocket here at the back which you can stick your water bladder into. So it is compatible with water bladders. Now on the hip belt, you have pockets, zip pockets on either side, which you can put a few bits and pieces into. They're not particularly large, but you could fit a few energy bars into there perhaps a small mobile phone if you wanted to. The back system itself is relatively flat, although I've noticed it does bulge outwards slightly with what's inside your pack, but that hasn't caused me any comfort issues. It uses Osprey's Airscape system, which gives you some ventilation around the back. It doesn't give you a tremendous amount, but it's enough to just keep some airflow going. It also helps keep your pack snug to your back, which I think is where it derives a lot of its stability from. Another thing you'll notice at the bottom is that you have zip access to the base of the pack as well. On the top of the bag, you've got one pocket at the top, which is a reasonable size. It's big enough to hold enough kind of things that you'd want to take in a bag of this size. But there's only one pocket. Some of the bigger bags have two. It doesn't disconnect where the straps are. It doesn't have a clip on point. On the inside, you have the standard mesh pocket with a key attachment. Under that, you have a strap here, which can clip on here. You could use this to put another bag here if you want to carry more and then put that on top to try and secure it into place or you can just use it to pull in the bag tighter. You also have the standard drawstring here to close the bag at the top using the Osprey dry bag. When you want to unpack you can just do that and get everything out in one go and that's the Osprey dry bag. It's the small 30 to 50 litre bag. I really do recommend it because it just fits perfectly. It even has the same flat back slightly round but mostly squared off design as that pack, I think it was probably built for it. Now that I've taken the inside out of the bag, I want to show you why this bag isn't particularly stable and it's because it just bends like this. Now it does have support rods down the side, but they're not particularly strong. That flexibility that the bag has like that is really impacting the amount of weight it can carry. I don't think that's a huge downside because a lot of the benefits that you get from this pack are partly due to this as well. It's just that you have to see this as a limit rather than a negative. Overall, I have to say, I've been really happy with the Talon 44. 
There have been times when I've wanted to have a little bit more space and just been a little bit frustrated with the lack of storage space on the outside. But then again, I can take my tent out, stick it onto those straps on the back and free up a lot of space within the bag. So with, within its limits, I think it's a very, very good pack. And it's actually becoming one of my favorite packs now. It did take me a little bit of time to learn to like it. And I think the thing that put me off with it slightly was that the distribution of weight between the shoulder straps and the hip belt isn't what you get with a lot of bags. Mostly you feel like it's 70 to 80% on the hips and then the rest is on the shoulders. But with this pack, it feels more like it's 50-50 and the heavier you go, you quickly realize that you're putting more of the weight onto your shoulders. I like this so much that it's growing on me all the time and I'm using this pack more and more. In fact, if you take the hip belt off and just leave these side bits, it also makes a really good day bag as well. Of course, the big question is how does this compare to the Osprey Exos 48, which is one of its most direct competitors. And lucky for you, I've done a video right here of a comparison between the two of them, which goes into detail looking at the pros and cons of both. So go and watch this next and find out what the difference is.